All right, guys, what's going on? Uh, today's video is going to be on knee wraps versus knee sleeves. Uh, so this is something that was uh, has been kind of brought to my attention as of late. Um, I have seen, and in my gym specifically, I, I've seen a bunch of different people uh, using different forms of supportive wear for their knees, whether that be wraps, sleeves, etc. cetera. Uh, I've had probably three or four people ask me questions on it, and I kind of give this, this really long-winded response. Uh, so what, what we're going to be doing is I'm just going to be making a video comparing and contrasting knee wraps versus knee sleeves. We're going to be talking about the advantages and the disadvantages of both of them. Uh, and then from there, I'm going to kind of talk about what I believe that you should should be using if, if you're looking to get some supportive wear for your knees. So first things first, I, I want to get this out of the way. Uh, I think that the ideal scenario when, when you're training is to use what I call naked knees uh, for as long as possible. So you're, you're doing the most amount of work that you can do without any form of, of supportive wear, okay? So that's no sleeves, no wraps, et cetera. I think that you need to have um, a base of training like that where, where you're training with no form of, of supportive wear. Um, so for example, something that really kind of rubs me the wrong way is if I see people barbell squatting 185 or 225 and that's like the maximum amount of weight that they can handle and they're using wraps and they're using a lever belt and they're using squat shoes and, and all of those kinds of things. That's, that's kind of a rant for a different day. But I, I think if, if your fo if your squat or hack squat or leg press, et cetera, is, is very, very subpar. And you are thinking that by getting some form of, of knee support is, is going to help with that, then I think that you've got your mind in the wrong place. And I think you really need to take a look at, at your, your training, your nutrition, how you're recovering, and all of those things before you decide to, to step into the world of, of supportive gear, okay? But let's say that we, we have somebody who's been training for a long time. They have really good numbers on, on all of their, their leg focused lifts. And now they're getting to the point where they need to start looking into a form of uh, supportive wear. Okay. Now, for, for whatever reason causes this, maybe they've got tendonitis in their knees. Um, maybe they're like me. I've, I've only been training for bodybuilding for like two and a half years, but I played football for eight years uh, before I started bodybuilding. And I was both an offensive and a defensive lineman. I played in a, on a very, very small uh, town football team. And so we, we hardly had enough players to field the team most years. And so we had to, uh, we had to play both sides of the ball, offense and defense. And, and I was playing offensive and defensive line. So uh, my knees have kind of, obviously there are people who have it way, way worse than me, but, but my knees are not a hundred percent. So for one, one way or another, one reason or another, we need to start looking at, at supportive gear. And uh, where, where do you go from here? So I want to preface this by saying that I think the, the decision that you make is going to be based off of your sport. Uh, and if you're not competing, whether that be powerlifting or bodybuilding, I think that it, it comes down to your goals. Like, what are you trying to accomplish? I also want to preface this by saying that the majority of the people that I work with uh, are bodybuilders or they have physique-related goals. So I'm going to be taking more of a physique uh, bodybuilding uh point of view on this topic, but I'm, I'm going to cover all the bases here, whether you're a power lifter, you're a bodybuilder, et cetera. So I'm, I'm going to be taking a, a look at all angles and we're just going to take a look at this um, subjectively and objectively, I guess you could say, so that we can, uh, we can make the best decision for you, the viewer. All right. So first things first, we're going to take a look at knee sleeves. So I've got two pairs of knee sleeves here. So my first pair, hopefully you guys can see this. My camera quality is not that great. My first pair I got from Strength Shop. Um, I'm going to put a link in the description for all of the products that I show. I've got, I've got two pairs of sleeves and two pairs of wraps. Uh, so for whatever reason, if you're interested in getting uh, one of a pair of, of one of these, I'm not affiliated in, in any way with any of these companies, but if, if for whatever reason you wanted to take a look, got the links for the products in the description. So these are Strength Shop knee sleeves. These particular ones, again, I you probably won't be able to see this, uh, but these are what I call a single, well, not what I call, these are, are what is called a single ply knee sleeve. Um, so what this is, is the material is just a single ply stitching. Now the, the opposite of that would be like a double stitched sleeve, which I have a pair of, let's see if I can show this, the Iron Rebel knee sleeves here. These are double stitched and in between each of the stitching, you can't even see this. Uh, in between each of the stitching is a seven millimeter thick 
um, layer of foam to, to help provide um, compression and, and, and comfort and, and all of those things. Um, you will not be able to see by the video because of my camera quality, but on this particular pair of sleeves, this was the first pair of sleeves that I bought, was a pair of the, the double stitched seven millimeter thick from Iron Rebel. The foam in the inside is actually ripped. And again, you can't see it's ripped here, it's ripped at the top. So these, these are shredded to the point where they're not even usable anymore. Um, and I, I'm not saying that as like a dig at, at Iron Rebel for the, for the quality of their product. What happened when I bought these product, uh, brought these knee sleeves, uh, they fit absolutely perfectly. And then what happened is over the course of seven or eight months, I gained like 20 pounds, 25 pounds in body weight. And when I got them, they were already like pretty tight. And then as I, I gained 20, 25 pounds in body weight, they obviously got tighter and tighter and tighter before they eventually just ripped out. So this is absolutely no dig at, at Iron Rebel, but that is something that you, you may want to take into consideration if you're buying a pair of sleeves is if you plan on gaining weight, you need to, to accommodate for that, especially with these uh, these were like $85 a pair, so that's something that I'm going to be talking about later. But anyways, I, I've got a pair of single ply sleeves, and I got a pair of of double stitched, what I would, I guess you could call a double ply sleeve. So what the advantages of the the knee sleeves are is that if you get single ply sleeves, so if you get those um, those strength shop knee sleeves that I showed, they're they're really cheap. Those were like 25 bucks a pair. They're very very cheap. You can buy. Um, you can buy single ply knee sleeves at a local Dick's Sporting Goods for really cheap. Um, knee sleeves, they provide compression and warmth ar around the joint, which will help increase the blood flow and reduce the swelling of the area. Um, they also limit the movement of your patella, which is the tendon right around your kneecap. And they can also help providing some, some lateral stability. So as we're, as we're stepping side to side. Uh, or moving side to side, which in, in most cases, specifically a bodybuilding scenario, we wouldn't be moving side to side laterally. Maybe in a power or a power lifting scenario as we're stepping out of the rack, they may help provide some some stability around the patellar tendon. Now the the disadvantages of the knee sleeves is like I said earlier, if you go to a seven millimeter sleeve, like those iron rebel sleeves that I showed, those can get really expensive. So those ones in particular I got them on sale, but even on sale, they were like $65. I know there are a lot of other websites like SBD, um, Mark Bell's website, all those where they sell very similar sleeves, but but they're still pretty expensive. If you wanted to get like a seven millimeter knee sleeve, uh, I recommend Strength Shop, uh, the same website where I got the single ply. Um, from what I saw, the, the seven millimeter sleeves are like 50 bucks or something like that on the on their website, you can probably find some some other ones that are around that price point on Amazon as well. Um, but but they they can run a little expensive, especially if you're starting to get some of these these name brands. Uh, this may be a disadvantage to some people. Uh, they get smelly, so as you uh, you get sweaty, then you get sweat on the on the knee sleeves. They can they can really smell. Uh, I recommend that you do not leave them in your bag or leave them in your car after a gym session. What I found helps the most is just turning them inside out and then hanging them up on uh, on a on a clothes hanger. Whether you hang that downstairs or outside on the clothesline doesn't really matter. But usually within like twelve to fifteen hours, they're completely dry and and the smell is gone. And then obviously you can wash them. Different brands have different washing um, instructions depending on the material of the sleeve. So you want to check into the the, the respective brand there. So so that's kind of what I. Uh, view how I view knee sleeves. Uh, and then from there, we're going to take a look at the wraps. So I've got two pairs of wraps here. So this first pair, they're all wrapped up in a, in a rubber band. But um, this pair I got off Amazon, it's from Harbinger. Uh, they were like $8. And then this pair, I've had this pair forever. So this is a pair of the the Gold's Gym knee sleeves or knee wraps, excuse me. You can buy these at Walmart for like five or six bucks. I bought these like right when I first started lifting uh, because for whatever reason, I felt like I needed them. And then it turns out that I don't think I've hardly ever used them to be 100% honest with you. So uh, let's take a look at the, the wraps. So what's important about the wraps is that wraps come in different lengths and they can come in different materials. So specifically the, the Harbinger brand, they're, they're a single ply elastic material and the, 
the Gold's Gym brand, this is a mixture between polyester and elastic. Um, so depending on the material of the of the, the wrap, that's, that's going to affect how it feels on your body and kind of how it springs up out of the hole, which is something that I'll get into. So the advantages of, of using a knee wrap is that they immediately increase the amount of weight that you can lift. Why this happens is because the tightness of the, the wrap around your leg as, as you can send into the, the, the eccentric uh, portion of a movement, think of barbell squat, as you're sitting down in the hole, you're creating elastic energy around the knee joint because of the, the elastic material of the, of the sleeve. And they kind of coil like a spring. Now, as you go to come up out of the hole, that energy releases and it helps spring you up out of out of the hole. So you, you'll notice the first time that you wear wraps, you can immediately put weight on your, your squat, your hack squat, your leg press, et cetera. You can immediately move more weight because they're, the, the wraps are kind of acting like a spring and they're springing you up out of the hole. Another advantage of the, uh, of the wraps is that they can reduce the stress on the tendons and your quadriceps. Now, the, the tendons in your quadriceps are attached to the patellar tendon, which is right around your knee. Um, when you wrap your knees, the purpose of the wrap is to hold that patellar tendon in place. So you're getting less movement from the patella, which gives you less quad movement in the, through, the, through the tendons of the quadriceps. And then the final advantage of the, of the knee wraps is that they're very cheap. You can get some that are really expensive, uh, but I just a, a very, very basic knee wrap. Again, these which are the ones that, that I particularly use were like $9 a pair. They're, they're unbelievably cheap. Now the disadvantages of the, of the knee wraps is that the tightness of the wrap can push the patellar tendon into your femur bone. This is obviously kind of exaggerated. Um, but what, what this does is it, it increases the amount of friction in between the patellar tendon and the femur bone. And over time, I think that this, this friction between the patellar tendon and the femur bone has the potential to cause arthritis. Now take uh, my word for it, I guess you could say. This is, I don't know how realistic this is. I know a lot of people that have been using knee wraps for 30 plus years and their knees feel, feel perfectly fine. So just take all of that with a grain of salt. But the potential for for arthritis or knee issues is there from the from the knee wraps. Um, they also what I have found with myself with my knee wraps is that I kind of lose circulation in my legs when when I use them. So like if I use knee wraps when I hack squat, as I start to get into my final reps, I think it's because the wrap is getting wrapped behind my knee, like right above my hamstring. I almost lose feeling in my feet, like it, it cuts off some circulation there. So I'm getting like a lot of uh, a lack of blood circulating in that area. And uh, you'll see this with a lot of people too, especially competitive power lifters. As soon as they rack the bar for their squat, the first thing they do is they immediately, as fast as they can, they take those those knee wraps off. And I think it's because they're wrapped so tight that they literally get no circulation in their legs at all. And they can't even feel their legs. And so as soon as the, the squat gets racked, the first thing they what they're trying to do is get blood circulating back in their, back in their legs. I, I understand that powerlifting is a completely different sport uh, than bodybuilding. And that's obviously the purpose of, of the knee wrap in, in that situation. And then finally, the final disadvantage of knee wraps, and this is kind of coming from uh, from the perspective of a bodybuilder, is that they, they spring you up out of the hole. And so where this can be uh, a problem is if you see a lot of bodybuilders that train uh, without knee wraps, they're very thick and they're very dense around the kneecap because a lot of these stabilizer muscles, think your teardrop muscle, all those kinds of things, they're helping move the weight. And w w when you're a bodybuilder and you have a physique-related goal, the the main goal is to use as, as many muscles and as many muscle fibers as possible to help move the weight. And especially in like a squat pattern to, to help get you out of the hole. That's what's obviously going to build thick and, and dense sweeping legs on stage. Whereas as if you have something that's kind of wrapped around your knee, that's, that's taking that ability away from you. I think from a, from a physique perspective, I don't think that that's an ideal scenario. Now the, this same disadvantage is an advantage if you're a power lift. That it, the goal in, in powerlifting is to move the heaviest weight possible from point A to point B, and wraps are absolutely going to help you do that. So it kind of depends on, on your sport, kind of going back to the beginning and, and what you're doing, uh, what you should be choosing to wear around your knees. So finally, I'm going to wrap this up. 
Um, I think if your goal is hypertrophy or aesthetics or you're a competitive bodybuilder, I think your absolute best bet is to go with uh, sleeves. If you are going to use sleeves, I recommend that you use a single ply sleeve uh, because the single ply sleeves, they provide warmth and they provide uh, compression around the knee, but they do not help you at all moving the weight out of the hole, whether that's a hack squat, a leg press, a barbell squat, Smith squat, front squat, whatever, it doesn't really matter. So you get the advantages of help keeping your knees warm and helping your knees feel safe, uh, but you also get the advantages of using the most amount of, of muscle fibers that are in your leg. If you're a power lifter, I highly recommend the wraps or you use a, a double uh, stitched sleeve, like a seven millimeter sleeve uh, that you may maybe order a size down so they're very tight around the knee so you can kind of get the same kind of get the same benefits as the as the wraps what i do specifically is i use my single ply sleeves every leg day um, whether i feel that my knees are sore or or not i always use them just kind of as like a preventative measure uh, again with the single ply sleeves they don't help me at all move weight out of the hole whether that's a squat leg press etc so it's just more to help keep my knees feeling fresh now there are some days where my knees are squeaking for, for whatever reason, or I do uh, a couple sets and I just feel that my single ply sleeves aren't cutting it. So what I do in that situation is I take out my wraps, those black harbinger wraps, and I wrap my knees because by, by wrapping my knees, uh, my knees feel great when I wrap them. Now, the disadvantage of wrapping my knees is that I can feel myself spring out of the hole, whether it's a hack squat, a leg press, etc. Uh, I can feel myself being sprung out of the hole, and I know that those little stabilizer muscles are not getting worked. So how I overcome that is when my knees are really sore and I have to use my wraps, I will pause in the hole, whether it's a hack squat, uh, again, leg press, V squat, power squat, whatever. I will squat in the hole so that I'm loading my legs on the eccentric. I am pausing in the hole in the, in the static Part of the of the range of motion so I'm, I'm taking the, the stretch reflex out of the wrap and then as I initiate the concentric I am using all the muscles in my quads and hamstrings to do so and I am not using the uh, using the stretch reflex of the wrap I'm just using the wrap to help keep the patellar and, and the quad movement to an absolute minimum hopefully you guys enjoyed that if you liked it go ahead drop uh, drop a like any questions go ahead and uh, either send me a, a personal message or, or leave a comment hope you guys have a good one if you're interested in online uh, training and nutrition coaching email is in the description otherwise take it easy guys